I'm Brandon Dutcher at the Oklahoma Council of Public Affairs, a public policy think tank in Oklahoma City. Uh, on February 11th, just hours after Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak relinquished power, I sat down in the OCPA library with Dr. J. Rufus Fears, the acclaimed historian of liberty who teaches at the University of Oklahoma. Dr. Fears is the Dr. David and Ann Brown Distinguished Fellow for Freedom Enhancement here at OCPA. So I asked him, are freedom and democracy coming to Egypt? Here's Dr. Fears. The media is presenting all of this as a, quote, transformational moment in the history of the Middle East. That's their <laughs> jargon. In point of fact, what's going on in Egypt today is what has gone on in Egypt and the Middle East since the time of the pharaohs. Uh, it is, a rep a rep it is the rep repetition of how regime changes come in the Middle East and always will come. Mm -hmm. This time it's associated with the toppling of a, quote, dictator Mubarak. And our press has insisted that he step down. Our President Obama has insisted that Mubarak step down that for 30 years he has tyrannized the people of Egypt and now in their righteous wrath, educated by CNN, <laughs> they have now come to understand democracy and want to achieve democracy. Well, that's all just nonsense. Largely a creation, one, by our own media. And for our own media, this is another way to exhibit their power. Not only can they make and break American politicians, they can make and break regimes all over the world. But also, this is a very carefully orchestrated toppling of a pro-American government that has rendered enormous help to Egypt, rendered enormous help to Israel. Yes, we bankrolled it because we must have friends in the Middle East to protect Israel and to protect our vital lifeline of petroleum. I have spent a great deal of time in Egypt, spoken with many Egyptians over the years in Arabic, uh, done archeological excavations, but also just talking with people and listening to the local um, religious leaders in their Sabbath day uh, sermons. What stands out is one, hatred of America, two, hatred of Israel. So what will come out of this is exactly what came out of the Iranian Revolution when the pro-American government of the Shah was demonized by our press, toppled. There was seeming chaos for some months and then this fundamentalist Islamic government emerged and continues to rule that country with an iron hand. That is what is going to happen in Egypt. I have seen over the years Islamic fundamentalism grow ever stronger in that country, which 20 years ago was very westernized, where women acted very much like American women, till today where they wear veils. And the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a long-standing fundamentalist political group in Egypt, will assume major control. I think this is uh, a very dangerous situation and I think President Obama, by being so weak in his foreign policy, has made the situation far more dangerous. The Middle East does not think in terms of months or days or even years. It thinks in terms of centuries and millennia. And the Middle East and Egypt, and above all the Muslim forces in the Middle East, think that in terms of the centuries to go, Islamic fundamentalism will triumph, and American democracy is a heresy. They do not see our country as a force for good. They see our democracy as one represented by the pornography on TV, by the fact that women are allowed to have a major role. To the fundamentalist Muslim, democracy is a heresy. The law of God is that God appoints the ruler. And any attempt to change the ruler is wrong. Democracy is their slogan today as it was in uh, Iran in the time of the Shah. 
Before that in Egypt, uh, all down until 1946, the slogan for the first part of the 20th century was independence or freedom from Britain. That was their slogan. All their troubles, their uh, economic problems were due to the British rule. In point of fact, Britain gave Egypt a stability and a good government it had not ever had before. But that was get rid of the English and everything will be good. Well, of course, a series of military dictators took over. And uh, the uh, slogan today is democracy, and I think we will first see a, maybe two or three military leaders. But I think the ultimate outcome will be a fundamentalist theocracy. So these are slogans that are used to win the support of the media. Mm -hmm. One of the hallmarks of our media is it simply doesn't understand the basic meaning of the word democratia. It just means the power of the people. And as Aristotle already saw, the people can put in place a complete dictator. Mm -hmm. Democracy in and of itself does not translate into true individual freedom. The majority can be as tyrannical as one person. Mm -hmm. The second major point is that a true democracy like ours has a constitution and changes governments in constitutional orderly fashion. We had the Boston Massacre, that was a riot, and then, still under British rule, those people who had participated were given a fair trial, the soldiers were given a fair trial, by John Adams as their attorney. Uh, but our revolution ended in a constitution. Even in the midst of the Civil War, we had an orderly election. Britain does not change its government because of riots breaking out in the street. Right. Germany had all these riots all through the 1920s in what was called the Weimar democracy. That ended in a Hitler. France toppled its regime by riots in 1789 and several more times in the next decade and ended up with a despotic Napoleon. Ancient Greece, Athens, had orderly transitions of government. The Roman Republic had orderly transitions of government. That's what separates us mm -hmm. from what is going on in the Middle East today.